I grew up on uh on West Ninth off of West Ninth Street. I come from a musical family. This is some of the stuff I wrote down on my mm, mm, mm. history as to who I played with. Yes, sir. My grandmother was an organist and pianist. I remember my aunt telling me that my grandmother, Dosha, she played in a brothel. Well, I kind of took that in the negative vein in the beginning until I looked at the history channel one night and saw how New Orleans developed. So if you were a musician like Louis Armstrong and others, then I began to understand that you had to be a top musician in order to play. She taught my mother piano, so she became a classical pianist. And uh, they moved to Chattanooga from New Orleans. I remember as a child, uh, people that either wanted to hear a particular tune or wanted her to play a particular tune, they would bring it to the house. And she would play it, and they would listen. Hmm. You see, hmm. and uh, my favorite piece that she played was "Simple Confession." I don't know what the, who the composer was, but that's what I would ask her to play all the time. Uh, even uh, having uh, a couple of strokes, she would always recover, get back to the piano, that's right. and, she would play again. and uh, until her day, I see. I wanted to let you know, and the reason why I was going to do this, and this was a decision a while back, is a $500 scholarship okay. that we give to any student that works and focus on music. Okay. It could be an adult or it could be a youth. Oh, okay. And so we wanted to make it originally the jazz and do the music. Nice. I I that. You have done so much. I'm sure you. Mm. You have done so much for us. <laughs> At 79 years old, he has been a strong advocate for music here inside of our city. My grandmother used to call it, when you somebody is so strong, you see him as a sleeping giant. We see him as a sleeping giant. He comes to work some of our kids. He actually did a, we did a tour here on the Big Nine. He actually took over the tour and started explaining personally what he knew Big Nine to be. It takes, it's one thing to read a book, it's one thing to experience it, and it's another thing to share it. We have Price has been a great mentor to me. This, this is where when Richard Chandler used to be playing as a 16 year old before I really started playing with the band, and I would take his bass. You had to be a certain age in order to, to get into clubs. But but me, I began coming to the clubs uh, when I was uh, 16, and I began to acquaint myself with Richard Chandler, which was a bass player uh, who played uh, with the Lee Blue Shefflers. So as much as I could, I followed the group. They had a radio uh, program at uh, WMFS that was on the west side on Wednesdays, so I would go there and listen to their music. And also, uh, he would allow me to take his instrument into a different uh, music venues whenever he played. So I would go in and pick up his bass and take it on in, and I would sit beside the stage. So on certain pieces that was very slow, and he knew that I could come up and maintain the slowness and he would call the note out to me that needed to be played. I would play the note. So that way I learned the various pieces that they were playing. A musical group came to Chattanooga. This particular group needed a bass player. So they asked Richard Chandler, who was the bass player for the Blue Shuffles, if he would consider going with them on the road. Well. Richard Chandler accepted the job. So I left Papa Stubbs and went with Blue Shepherd. They had gigs uh, six months ahead of time. Mm. See, so, mm. so when I got with them, we stayed busy. And little Richard came to Chattanooga during the, uh, the 50s, and I had just started with the Blue Shepherds. 
Mm. And the Blue Chef was so popular, they honored them with being the band that played the first 30 minutes wow, before he Blue came Chef. on. So that's when I asked you, it, uh, if it's possible, if you can ask around and see if anybody have a picture of that. I'm going to try to find see, it for you. Because I was playing bass with yep. him at the time, see. Who's that right That's there? my older brother. He's the one that played bass. That, really? He's, he's the reason I'm playing. He was more or less the, the caretaker. He would always uh, look out for uh, my mother. See, that's him playing with him. And that's him right here, too? Yeah, that's him, yeah. I remember one one time he came down here, and he wasn't satisfied with the, the home that we were staying. Uh, he made a point to go to talk to uh, Booker T. Scruggs, which is Booker T.'s father, who was the manager of College Hill Court at the time. And uh, he made arrangements for us to get an apartment at uh, College Hill Court. And of course, we never had to worry about rent because uh, Alton was sending the money down to pay for it, you see. So we remained there until my, until my mother passed. Uh, we stayed in, in the project. And he worked at Ford mm. and played on weekends. He played banjo bass and guitar. And he would play in Flint, Battle Creek, and, and places like that around Detroit. And when he passed, it, it was a, well, it was a shock to hear that uh, he had uh, developed cancer. See, because the last time I saw him, he was a, a handsome, husky player, you know, a person that uh, this looked in good health. Yeah, just holding on everybody. My mother, she took it hard, and he, he passed in 1953, and she passed in uh, uh, 1955. My brother was 39 when he passed. I was in high school. I think when he passed, I was in uh, in the 10th grade. My aunt, she went to care for him, and uh, once he passed, he asked her to take care of his base. She shipped it down to Chattanooga. So my mother, being a classical pianist, uh, for some reason she enrolled me in Shotty. I didn't know anything about it. She didn't ask me no question. So I started going to Shotty Conservatory. A little bit of history. Some of the people who played back in the 30s. Yeah. Uh, we're familiar with yeah, I put Now, you know I put banners on ML King. Yeah. And I got a picture of him. Yeah. Well, see, when, when Wilford came back, mm -hmm. uh, he got he came came to me because uh, uh, somebody directed him to me as the bass player. So every day almost, we were down in the basement talking music. And uh, his, his, his wife, Ernestine, he gave me uh, tapes. Really? Of him playing with uh, Roy Eldridge and different ones. Really? He gave me pictures of him. He gave me three pickups of my basses. And I got his family bass. Get out of here! <laughs> this is made out of my heart in the Redwood. And what happened is, when he left, and his father, Coop Neil Brooks, was a bass player, he gave me pictures of his father. Now his family father, bass. before him, played this bass. See? And then when Wilford left at the age of 16, uh, the bass is sitting in the corner. So, explain, mm, mm, explain mm. it to me. Yes. Wilford's brother got tired of looking at it and he punned it. <laughs> now, this, this is back in the 70s. So, what happened is that there was a bass player in here at the time who, whose name was Stanley Conover. Okay. Stanley Conover was tight and he was giving me some instructions on the bass because I was just starting out. So he came to me one Friday, I'll never forget. Mm -hmm. He said, Price said, you got $330, I mean $350, excuse mm -hmm. me. I said, no, I don't. I said, what you want it for? <laughs> he said, he said the ink, ink spots are down at the choo-choo. The ink spots. And said, the bass player went across the street to uh, to uh, Sanders' mm -hmm. uh, long office. And said, wow. it's a bass over there he's thinking about getting. And he said, the bass is, for $350. Mm, mm, he said, mm. I want to get it. 
I said, no. I said, I tell you what I do, Sam. He said, uh, the day is Friday. I go to the bank and I borrow the money. Wow. And uh, he said, well, Price said, I don't have to have the money for you Monday. I said, well, I tell you what I do. I'll get the base. Right. And I said, when you get the money Monday, bring, bring it to me. Give it. Monday never came. I acquired this base in. Oh, uh, my yeah, goodness. $350. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was the public fee.